It's better to be lucky than good. Oh, and don't forget, timing is everything. You bird and wildlife photographers can probably guess where I'm going with this. We're always reminded of the importance of time in the field and that patience is essential with this beautiful hobby. Well, yeah, of course, but that's not what we're talking about today. This is different. This is attempting to understand how some photographers seem to have all the luck and folks like us may find ourselves showing up late to the party. So what is it? What is the secret sauce? Why do some photographers appear to have all the luck? But more importantly, what can you and I do to turn our luck around? Well, luckily, I sit around and think about stuff like this all the time. Years back, I read a book by Dr. Weissman called The Luck Factor. Dr. Weissman is a real smart guy from England that conducted fancy studies trying to figure out what made people lucky. Or rather, why some people consider themselves lucky. Hey, spoiler alert. There's no mention of bird or wildlife photography in that book. Nowhere. I checked. However, the four lucky lessons he discussed have always stuck with me and I'm hopeful that I can manipulate some of those principles and apply them to this beautiful hobby. The first principle is basic. It's all about putting yourself in position to be lucky. Thomas Jefferson put it another way. He said, I am a great believer in luck. I find the harder I work, the more I have of it. Or simpler said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah, look, that sounds good, Tom, but how can a person with a full-time job, a family, and chores work harder at bird photography? In my humble opinion, this is one of those pieces of advice that needs to be contextualized. This is a beautiful hobby, and it would be a shame to think that the only lucky photographers are the ones that get to spend all day every day hunting down owls and eagles. For that reason, I'm not going to spend too much time on this point, other than to say this. Time may not always come in big chunks, but you'll certainly find your fair share of luck if you simply put yourself in a good position to succeed. When time allows, of course. Remember, this is a lifelong hobby. Now the next three principles are more my speed. These tenants are not so much about quitting a job to chase birds, but rather quitting that bad line of thinking that might hinder me from having success. Principle number two, think lucky. Thinking lucky has a lot to do with experience. It's being able to recognize and act on those gut feelings. It usually comes in the form of intuition. For me, it might manifest as a premonition or feeling that if I just wait here a few more minutes, something cool is going to happen. And then it does. <laughs> Lucky me. Or better yet, that hunch that maybe, just maybe if I go that way while all the rest of the photographers go that way, well, look, you get it. It all starts with a good thought, which of course is better than a bad thought. Which leads me to another quote from some other famous guy. I don't know who it was. He said, whether you think you can or think you can't, huh, you're right. So think lucky, it's easy. Right? Or is it? 
Owing to lucky principle number three, you gotta feel lucky. Expect to be lucky. Expect good fortune. The best way to understand this principle is to examine the contrary. The opposite of feeling lucky is expecting defeat or imagining that nothing good is ever going to happen. Therefore, why even try? Hey, I've been guilty of this before. Thoughts like, I'm tired of taking pictures of the same old birds. Why even go out there again? I'm just going to get the same shots. Might as well stay home. Or, I never get close enough to the duck, so why even try? Hey, feeling lucky is a byproduct of perseverance. It's an attitude of not giving up because things haven't gone your way thus far. It's an understanding that failure is a essential key to success. A clear grasp on the idea that each unsuccessful outing teaches us how to be more successful on the next outing. Therefore, I've adopted the practice of affirmation. I continually tell myself, I feel good about today. I'm gonna get something good, I can feel it. Sometimes these assertions feel kinda silly, but I can't deny its effectiveness. And when it doesn't quite go the way I envisioned, I implement principle number four, which is to deny fate or turn the bad luck into good. Okay, look, I, I'll admit, I find the good in everything. That's what kind of guy I am. Therefore, that silver lining mentality, it just comes easy to me. I've learned not to dwell on the letdowns, but rather recognize the boundless beauty and even the worst of outings. And when things don't go as expected for any duration of time, I've learned that problem solving feels so much better than complaining. Bottom line friends, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is a beautiful lifelong hobby. And if you struggle finding luck or joy while out exploring, perhaps think about those four tenets of getting lucky. Thanks again for watching, friends. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time, consider hitting that subscribe button and always leave a like. Have a great day, friends.